Hi, hello. <clears throat> As John said, my name is Stefan, and um, I'm here to talk to you today about how we, as a society, place value on art. Now, I don't mean how we as a society view art and how we feel about art. I'm talking specifically on how we place monetary value on the things that we purchase that are art. Um, and to start off with that, uh, this painting here you can purchase for, uh, what was it, 790 US dollars on the internet. Uh, it is called City Center by Ha Hong, and you can find it on the internet. And that is a great place to start because this is one of the first things we can look at. So to bridge into this question, what is the value of art? I want to talk about my personal experience as an artist. So uh, to talk about this, uh, I started a business in college. It was an art business. Uh, I used it to buy weed. I didn't have money, and it was the best way for me to do it. And to do so, I would get a large piece of fabric, uh, usually bed sheets, because you can go to Value Village and buy them really cheap. And then I would take Sharpie, and I would put these designs on them. And I didn't know how to price these pieces. I was really confused by it. I didn't know if I should be pricing them high or low, or if I should be doing it by how much time I put into it, the materials I used. I, I honestly didn't know, and there was no one I could ask that I felt would give me a reliable answer. So I started selling the, my first piece for, for about $40. That was about the cost of my materials, and I sold that to my friend. And um, when I gave it to him, he's like, wow, this is absolutely amazing. And word of mouth spread, and I had some other people approach me and ask me if they could purchase them. They saw me working on them. They're like, wow, these are really cool. I mean, these are murals. They're not small. They're about three feet by four feet. They're, they're large. And when I was approached by someone, they were like, wow, I can't believe what incredible skill you have. And I looked them in the eye, and I said, thanks. And in that moment, I realized that these people were willing to pay more money because they thought I was a very talented artist. But to be honest, that's not the truth. Um, I use a projector to make these. I project onto the fabric that was hanging on a wall and fill it in with Sharpie. I make the designs on Photoshop. But that brings the question into my head, do they value my skill as an artist or do they value my product as an artist? And is there a difference? And I honestly think there is a difference, and that's what I'm here to ask you guys here tonight. Is there a difference between skill and product? So uh, this is a guide through my uh, presentation here. Uh, we're gonna start off with the definition of art because I think it's important that we're all on the same page as we discuss what is and what isn't art. So art defined by Google is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. In that definition, there is no uh, explanation of how we price things. It talks about how we as viewers have emotional connection. And that's really important to when we view art and how we think about what we can and how we do place monetary value on it. So uh, our exploration for the rest of this presentation will be on the value of skill, how we as humans value skill put into art, how we as humans value the product that is produced of art, and lastly, abstract value, the random things that make up art that make no absolute sense. So let's begin. So value of skill. When I think about skilled artwork, the very first thing that pops into my head is tattoos. And this is for a very specific reason. They are permanent. They're not something you can just willy-nilly go in and be like, yeah, man, I want this. It's something you got to consider. I guess you can go willy-nilly. But most of the time, people go in and they're like, I want this because it means something. So they pay for the skill with the artist to produce something that is absolutely magnificent. This piece here is Owl Eyes by Daniel Bedeo. Uh, the permanency demands the need for extreme skill. 
and many different veins. Either the lines are absolutely perfect, the shading contrasts your body in a wonderful way. The lines make up something that is so abstract that you have never seen the likes of it before. But would you pay someone that has no experience? No, you're going to pay money and you're going to pay more money to someone who has the skill to produce this beautiful art and you're more willing to do so. Um, and this is a very interesting thing when it comes to art because with tattoos in themselves, we look for the, their rigidness, their perfectness. And when we see someone with a beautiful piece, we ask, hey, where did you get it done? We want to know who the artist is because we want to know who their skill is. I get that question all the time when people look at my, my tattoos. They're like, who did that? And I tell them because it's important to give credit to that skilled artist. And the next thing we can look at in terms of value of skill, just as an example, is pointillism paintings. Uh, pointillism paintings are paintings comprised of small dots of paint. Usually they're multi different colors and they take an extreme amount of time to make. Um, a famous pointillism artist named R. Bangs said that an average painting that is about this big, this isn't really helpful, but it's not big, uh, takes about 60 to 90 hours to produce. 60 to 90 hours. That's working hours, that's not just time passing. They put in nine, 60 to 90 hours on something so small. And these paintings go for around five to six hundred dollars, or hers do at least. And what does that say about her? Does that say we value the time she put in it? Because it takes an absolute insane amount of time for these paintings to be produced. Or do we, produce the, or do we value the painting itself? I believe that when it comes to pointillism paintings, the skill is generally what people are paying for, especially in the color placement, the dot placement, how the artist views the art. And it's really important to see the skill when we buy these things. And this brings me to my next slide. Or not. There it is. Value of product. So. Um, when we think about products, the first thing that comes in my head is uh, originality versus prints. And this is a very interesting topic because we will have an original painting that will sell for up to four times as much on average as a, as a print. This is a rule of thumb. There are obvious uh, exceptions all over the internet. Um, but to, based on my research, going to national galleries online and seeing what paintings sell for, we can see that an original will sell for four, up to four times more. But this isn't always the case, and here's an exception to that. If an artist puts out a limited amount of prints, those prints can sell for up to three to four times more than the actual original. So if an artist puts out, say, five prints of something they put a lot of work into, uh, and they say, yo, I'm only gonna put these five out, this is it, this is it forever, and this, this painting is gonna go into a museum, those prints could make this man millions and millions of dollars. Or a woman, yes, thanks for keeping me gender neutral. <laughs> um, back to the topic here. <laughs> as another value of product, we can talk about experience as a product when it comes to art. Uh, we can talk about video games and movies specifically because when you go and you purchase, say, a video game that is brand new, uh, the average retail price is $60 US for a brand new game. Uh, yes, thank you. And um, this is a good, it's, it's a starting point for where games are. And this is where we can look at if a game is good or bad. Does the $60 necessitate that this product is going to be good? No, it doesn't. This is just where the price point starts. What does that mean for how we value art? If it just comes out at a single place. And we can say the same thing for movies. Avengers Endgame just came out and is one of the highest grossing movies of all time and its average ticket price is $9. Yet, 
there's a movie, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Love Actually, and it's a terrible movie. It also came out for $9. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> regardless, regardless of opinion, the movies came out for $9, but they do not necessitate, necessitate that this product is gonna have the same merit of, of good. It, it, does, it doesn't lead into that at all. And this leads me to modern art. Um, this here is Marcel Duchamp's piece, Fountain. It is a urinal that is on display at the Tate Modern Museum in London. Um, this piece is what broke art, or that's how they like to put it on the internet. Uh, this piece sold for nearly two million dollars. It's a urinal. Why would it sell for two million dollars? It has the words R Mud on written on it. It was photographed, and when it came to be put on auction, uh, the auctioneer said, no, I'm not putting that up, that's ridiculous. Which only generated more value for this piece because it is conceptual. This idea when purchased is that you're purchasing the idea of art, not necessarily material art. So what does that mean for the value of art? This brings me to abstract value. Abstract value is the randomness of pieces of paintings. Uh, real quick, has anyone in here seen this painting before? Raise your hand if you've seen this painting before. Cool, not many of you. This is the most expensive, expensive painting ever sold in the world. Does anyone know who it's by, excluding the people that were there at the Philosophy Forum last night? No? No. Oh. Yes, yes, actually, it is by Da Vinci. <laughs> it is titled Salvador Mendali by Leonardo da Vinci, and it sold for close to $400 million. After fees and taxes, it sold for $450 million, which is close to half a billion US dollars. Why? Why would this, something like this sell for that much? Is it because it's Jesus? Is that, is that what we place the value on? Is it because it was painted by a master, Leonardo da Vinci? Or was it because of the condition that it was found in when it was painted in the 1500s and that we can still have it? Well, the answer is none of these. Uh, actually, this painting sold for $450 million because it was marketed as a contemporary piece to contemporary auctioneers. And it went on an extensive marketing campaign and someone decided that they're gonna purchase this as a status symbol and at auction raise the price by $300 million just because they could. And because of that, this piece became the most expensive piece in the world and now has a status symbol. What does that say about the value of art? I'm gonna close with a, uh, with a quote. A picture is only worth what one person will pay for it. When you buy something at auction, whether it's 10,000 or 450 million, the only thing which you can be certain is that nobody else was prepared to pay what you were. And uh, that's my piece. My name is Stefan. Hi, hello. One more round of applause for Mr. Stefan Cherowick, everybody. Thank you very much.